Oh, good to see you today. We had problems yesterday. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is Wednesday, January 24th, which means tomorrow being Thursday, I've got a live streaming event, another one, because I do these every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. When the market's shutting down, I'm just turning on. Me and my co-host Taylor, we're there for 60, 90 minutes talking to investors about the stocks they want us to look at. And hopefully you're bringing us some hot stocks that I've missed out on and you can share with everybody. I'll go over the information. If you know what the catalyst is, drop it in the comments along with your ticker. Then Taylor will go over your charts and we'll give you our opinions on it, whatever that's worth to you. Maybe you just want to highlight it so everybody else sees it and kicks it up. That sounds good to me too. Now, if you really want your ticker looked at, we can only look at so many in the time we're there. So get it in the queue early. I put up a placeholder for this video, maybe noon, one, somewhere around there. Drop the ticker in the comments then. It will definitely get looked at, first come, first served, and that gives me more time to go over the information. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, tomorrow, Thursday, every Thursday. So what we do on this show is we look at hot penny stocks. We're talking about stocks under five bucks that have the potential to make you money, and they're on every single market. And this is primarily where I do my due diligence looking for hot stocks. I believe finding a hot chart is more important than finding hot news. I see the news as being lumber you're putting on the fire, and the chart is the fire. The hotter the fire, the better the wood's going to burn. So yeah, it's nice to find news to go on a hot chart, but a hot chart is going to burn nonetheless. So what I've got here for you is some extra due diligence I was doing before the bell rang and after I had the stocks I was going to share with you lined up, and I got a few hot charts here I just want to toss at you. So we've got one side of the coin. You can do the due diligence and see if it has a catalyst. Now, cake is cake. We all love cake. A hot chart is a nice piece of cake. If you find a hot piece of news, it's frosting on the cake. It's better, but that doesn't mean it won't run if you can't find a catalyst. A hot chart will burn on its own. So this is where I do my due diligence. I just pull up a penny stock scan and I start looking at charts. Now it's a little bigger than this. I fit it into the screen so that you can just see what I do. And I just breeze through them. But I breeze through them on the four hour chart. So let me get this set up and show you exactly what I've got for you. We're going to close my quick chart, save the list. I've got four hot charts for you here. And we're going to start this off on the four hour. Let me get it. There we go. First hot chart we're going to take a look at is integrated cannabis. Integrated cannabis, right? Yes, integrated. This is ticker IGPK. Been a lot of buzz about this on Twitter. Well, as you can see, she has been hot. No doubt about it. Volume is very strong. She is ripping. Everything looks great on the four hour chart, and that's where I look for heat. But I don't stop there. I get a better picture when I jump down to that one hour chart. So if we look at the one hour chart, you can definitely see she is perfectly doing what she needs to do. We had a nice strong surge here. She went from uh, just under a penny to just under six cents. <whistles> Over 500% run here. She came back down to the middle point. That is the halfway point from where she started her run here to the top there. That is the halfway point. She came right to it. Landed on it, scooted underneath it, and now she's bouncing again and starting to climb. All of our volume has been just here in the last seven days, and all of our oscillators are pushing up right now. Looks really good to me. Another hot chart. This is eBet. I've been posting about this one because she's been doing a lot. Let's jump on back to the four hour first. So she did have a big rip back here. That was in uh, June. She went from about five and a half bucks up to $15. Now, you really can't see much here, so I just zoom in to see what's going on, and you can see what's going on. We have an atypical breakout, 200-day SMA finally getting close, and the price making a move for it. She has been scraping across the bottom here, breaking this soft resistance from the high that she had a couple weeks ago, and if I back up, you can see where this strong resistance came from. Now, once she breaks this soft resistance, she's got nowhere to go but the next resistance. She's going to be flying towards that. Well, to get there, she's got to go through that 200. 
She's then going to be in the midst of a breakout, which means she'll probably go past that resistance. Now, I'm not saying she's going to run without turning back. She may come around and bounce on the 200, but this is a perfect setup. As you can see, volume is starting to increase and all of our oscillators are waving up right now. Next one, this is Searchlight Reserves, ticker SCLTF. That is our four hour chart right there. She is coming down and bouncing off of this low bubble and directly, immediately crushing that 200 and climbing. Lots of volume coming into the picture right now and all of our oscillators are on fire. But let's take a look at that one hour view. It's a sweet climb here, folks. Nice and easy on our nine day SMA. But what we've got to watch here is the altitude on these price bars from our SMA. The price can float, but it cannot fly. <laughs> so if it gets too high, it's got to come back down and bounce off of something. And hopefully it just bounces off of this nine again. Oscillators are looking very strong on this. Last hot chart we got here. This is Nova Access Global, ticker XSNX. Let's go back to our four hour chart. This is how I identify the heat. So she doesn't look super hot here and my low bubble is actually in the way here, but that's actually part of the catalyst. What's happening is our 200 day haul is curving around and now that's like the 200 day SMA. It carries a lot of strength on the board, but it's different. It takes 200 days of prices, averages them all together and then puts more credence on current prices. So you get a different long term line and a lot of people don't use the 200 haul, but penny stocks have been respecting it a lot. Well, it has just started turning up right now and we had a huge spike of volume and a huge spike in the price today. All of our oscillators are starting to come up, but I think you get a better picture over here at the one hour 20 day look. This is what I loved about this chart. This is a perfect token that it is going to break out. This is what I like to call a directional intentional spike. And I look for these when the 200 gets real close, you'll see this big green bar push all the way up to the 200 and then like a snake spit out this long wick way above the 200. Then it is going to fall back and that's okay. It's part of the token sign come down, but not any lower than where it started. That is opening up the door for an opportunity to break out. The reason, well, look at our 200. She was falling hard and firm here and you can tell right in this area, she's now starting to lessen her incline, right? Well, when you push the price way up high, there's a little string on that SMA. And now that you've gotten it less, you can actually tug that SMA flat, making it an opportunity to break out. So as, as soon as I see one of these, immediately it goes on my watch list because I know maybe in the next two days, seven days, it's going to make a break and it's going to fly. That is a very strong wick right there. Oscillators say she's just now making her move. We got a crossover on our MACD, crossover imminent in our PPO, which is just like the MACD, except it uses a percentage of the price or the MACD uses the full price. So there is another hot chart for you. So you've got four hot charts there worthy of putting on your watch list just because of technicals, but go do some quick DD. Just go look at their news and filings over the last couple of weeks. See if anything's there. See if there's a reason for it to run. Now I've got three hot penny stocks. These are only hot charts. What's the difference? A hot penny stock has news to match the chart. <laughs> Let's go check them out. I am ready and raring to go here, folks. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is talk less. <laughs> we're not going to talk about the charts since we're going to look at them here in just a few minutes. That'll save us some time. Just presume from the get go that any stock we're looking at has a hot chart. That's what catches my attention to the company in the first place. So we are looking at VS Media Holdings, ticker VSME. She had a hot day, finished the day just under 65 cents and almost 100% gains. Now, this is a hot penny stock on the major exchange. This comes with benefits over the OTC penny stocks. What kind? Well, first off, there's no transaction fees. You can buy shares for free. You can sell them for free. You can't do that on most OTC stocks. Plus, you can trade at pre-market, after-market. You can never trade OTC market in those periods. And let's face it, there's more volume in money up on the major exchanges. So what is this company about? 
Well, they tell us here that they are an investment holdings company that operates a network of digital creators who create and upload content to social media platforms such as Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. This company is from China. They only are working in China from what I can see. And they have a bunch of influencers that put material out, people like me. And they make money on the advertising from these influencers. That's where their revenues come from. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Ho, ho, ho. No, that's not a late impression of Santa. That's me being overwhelmed by this volume jump, going from 353,000 shares a day for the last 30 days, roughly, to over 57 million. You're looking at over 150 times her normal volume. Think we got a catalyst here? Mm-hmm. Share structure for the company. Outstanding share count is an even 20 million. And for some reason, I was curious what the float was on this. So I did a Google search. And since they can't all agree, I just looked for the one that is agreed upon the most. And I found 10.5 million roughly. So it looks like we have a float half of the outstanding share count right at about 10 million, which is excellent. Market cap for the company, we're at 6.5 million. Checking out the financials for VS Media. Over the last two years, they are making money, roughly 10 million. We know that's millions and not thousands because we've still got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on these charts, any of the charts. This last year, they did drop a little bit, but it looks like <laughs> by $2, their profits went up. They made less, but made more profit. We can deal with that. Quarterlies, eh, being on the NASDAQ, you normally don't get quarterlies, but you do get balance sheets. So what do we got here in the bank? We got roughly 820,000 total assets, all the money they got together everywhere they got it, 7.5 million, all their debt in one big bag, 5.9 million. Hey, hey, there's profit left over for the investors. We get 1.6 million to divide amongst ourselves, amongst all those shares. Taking a look at the disclosures. This is where our catalyst comes from. We do have a piece of news to look at. It's not the best piece of news, but it's the way things are right now. But right here, this SC13G, this is a filing that goes in whenever you have a new investor come on board. And they're always good news. But if it's a name you recognize, all of a sudden it becomes a different game. Well, look at the name here, folks. Warner Brothers Discovery. Yes, we are talking about this company right here, Warner Brothers Television, Discovery Television. So this form tells us over here that the parent company, Warner Brothers Discovery Inc., through their subsidiary, Discovery Networks Asia Pacific, this is their Asian division for a Chinese company, right? They have just bought 1.6 million shares and are now the proud owners of 8.2% of the company. Now, there is no news anywhere, not here, not on Google. They talk about the investment in places, but nobody tells us what's going on. And I don't know what's going on. You've got a company here that has a fleet of influencers on social media working with them, or is this just an investment? Is there going to be nothing else going on? Uh, I don't know. That's the whole point. All I know is that the chart was hot. Now, there was only one piece of news to take a look at. They got three pieces of news, and this was the only one that qualified. Their price, as you can see, is under a dollar. And anytime you go under a dollar on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange, you're in trouble. Now, you can be under there for a little while, and nobody's going to say anything. But under there for too long, and you get a warning. Well, they got a warning for being under a dollar for 33 days. Now, in case you didn't know, most of the time the NASDAQ doesn't get into a huff until six months go by. This is only 33 days and they were given a deadline. Now, I don't know exactly when it happened, but you can count back. They get 180 days to get this taken care of. Well, they were warned a while ago because they say the date is June 24th, 2024. Maybe that is six months from now. Yeah, sure is. So by June 24th, 2024, they have to have gone over a dollar and closed over a dollar 10 days straight. Then they're out of hot water. If that doesn't happen, the next sentence tells you what's going on. 
If the company chooses to implement a reverse stock split, it must complete the split no later than 10 business days prior to June 24th, which would be June 7th. So if we don't see the price going up before then, there's a very strong likelihood, like they just said, June 7th, they are going to be doing a reverse split. And they didn't tell us how big it is, but any reverse split is bad. But as day traders, I don't think we're going to be around six months from now, right? We're looking at this now because it has a hot chart. Let me share with you what I found over there. We're back here at my playground where I love to play. This is my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. We are looking at VS Media, ticker VSME. And not only is this a six month, four hour view, it's the entire view. Seems that this is the day the company came on the market, September 28th. She was at a low of $3. She hit a high of $7.5. Came down and had a nice run here, hitting $8.64 and then toppling down to the $1 zone here. And then she dribbled even further down to $0.30, cents, which she just hit the other day. And now it looks like she's on a trend change. She was falling here. Went sideways for quite a few days, took a crouch down to the 200-day haul, which she tapped, and then she bounced off of that like a cat would and went and crossed every single SMA, including the 200, with that super long wick pulling up the 200, tugging it up, going to make it flat, coming back down and landing just underneath the 200. Beautiful move from way down here on the low bubble to sitting near the 200. We've had lots of volume come in today, and you can see it was building up since yesterday. Osculators are looking great. PPO is pushing up. MACD is climbing. RSI was hotter, but it's still pretty warm at 61 right now. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view, lots of sideways activity here until yesterday. It was right at the bell. She took a jump going from 31 cents up to 48 cents and topping the day off at 50 cents. And then this morning, she fell all the way back down to that 200, laid right on it. I mean, she bounced severely from 38 cents up to 87 cents. You're looking at 250% run before she came tumbling back down, landing on her nine day SMA. That's a good landing. You can't expect it to stay at the top. It's got to pull back some, and this isn't bad at all. All of our SMAs are just now crossing the 200. Good time to watch this tomorrow. And as you can see, our oscillators are cooling off because after period here, it's been falling. Everything is falling after period. Looking at our five-day, five-minute. Well, there's a good tail there. She really respects the 200. She was dangling on it here. Fell down, crouched like a cat does before it pounced hard, came down, did a rubber ball bounce, going under the water and coming back up, shooting up top, came down and didn't even land on the 200, landed on the 50, and then did another huge bounce. Now she's coming back down to the 200 again. Watch your habits here. She does go a little bit under the 200 and then she pounces, goes under the 200 and pounces. So I'll be watching this to come under the 200 and do another pounce and bounce. Oscillators are as weak as we've seen them on this chart. Every single one of them is pushing down right now. But as I said, if we're expecting this to come underneath the 200, it's got to fall some more. Right now, we are at a price of 64 cents. Well, that was at the end of the day. Truly, we are closer to 53 cents. Our 200 is at 49 cents. We could see it come down to 49, 47, somewhere around there, and hopefully come around. Now, what is not so great here is all of the SMAs are on top of the price. All of them except the 200, even the nine day. So they are all pushing the price down. So I would anticipate for just like here, all the SMAs are on top. I expect it to push it under the water and then it'll come popping back up like that. All right, BSME, she has potential, right? She's got a new big investor and who knows, maybe they do have some sort of collaboration of working together coming up. That would be another great catalyst. VSME, toss it onto your watch list. It's free to do.
Our next hot penny stock comes from the OTC. This is Relic Health Technologies, ticker RQHTF. Now, this is a company making some money. Maybe their financials are all kind of wonky over here. But the news tells us they're coming into some big money. Relic Health finished today at 16 cents in just under 7% gains. She is a hot pink. She's current. She's got one of those pieces of validated information, the transfer agent verified. She is missing the verified profile, which we would like to see considering it's a pink. You don't get any validated information with pinks. But as day traders, we should be in and out and this shouldn't be a concern. If you're going to be holding a pink for a while, you want as much validated information as you can get. So what is this company about? Well, the company is in the health technology business. They provide comprehensive hardware and software solutions that allows complex patients to receive in-home care, improving the health outcomes, enhancing the quality of life for the patients and families, and reducing the cost of care delivery. So what was the relative volume around this Canadian company today? Oh, she dropped over 60%. Already under the radar doing just about 125,000 shares. Today, she only did 38,000. Share structure for Relic. Looks average to me. Outstanding share count is about 220 million. The insiders own less than 5 million shares amongst themselves. And we get the rest, 215 million, if these numbers are correct. Like I said, just your everyday average float. Market cap for the company currently at about $33 million. Financials for the company. As I said, they're wonky. We got nothing here since 2018. Same on the quarterly. Now, is that going to be our balance sheet too? Yeah. So we've got nothing here. And to be quite honest, I have not jumped into the financial because it really is all about the news. They're telling us that money's coming in. Take a look at those disclosures. Nothing to see here. So all we've got is that one piece of news. Actually, I think we've got two pieces of news here. So I am looking back to December of last year. The company announces new contracts with 10 physician practices in Florida, Texas, and Nevada to add over 10,000 patients to their IUGO care. Keep that number in mind, 10,000 new patients. Then we just had a piece of news come out here about two weeks ago. The company announces expansion of a contract with a large U.S. health plan. Expects to add 50,000 new patients to IUGO care. Let's jump into this piece of news because they got some details in here for us. They tell us that the company is pleased to announce that it has expanded the contract previously signed May 2023 with a large U.S. health plan. The health plan operates accountable care organizations and health maintenance organizations in five different states with over 3,000 doctors and more than 1 million patients. The company expects to add over 50,000 health plan patients in Texas to the IUGO care platform by the end of 2025 at an average of $65 per patient per month with an expected 75% gross margin. So let's do some math here. They say they're going to get 50,000 by 2025 out of what? A million? Are they lowballing us? I mean, there could be a lot more, but let's just stick to 50,000. They tell us it's going to be $65 per head per month. You do the math, it comes out to 3.2 million a month. Figure that out on a quarterly basis, you're just under 10 million. But wait, there's more. <laughs> we got that other 10,000 that they just got right over in Texas, Nevada, and Florida. So add that in as well. Now you're closer to 4 million a month. Now you're at 12 million a quarter. That's putting you at $48 million annually. And that's if they only do the 50,000 here and the 10,000 in the other piece of news. Anything above and beyond that is obviously going to be great. So I see a lot of potential here and we are now approaching the time for financials to be coming out, especially the annuals. So it would be nice to see some, some numbers come out, but that is the potential. And I do believe that's why the stock is running. We didn't see anything else. Taking a look at Relic Health. This is a six-month, four-hour view. 
We got our high bubble virtually six months ago of about 50 cents when she was over the 200. When she came under it, she fought desperately to get back on top, but ultimately lost that battle. And for a few months here, she has been falling, hitting a low of eight cents two or three days ago. Volume was real strong, got real light, and now it's coming back into the picture. But today, the volume was really light, and still, we had a nice pop. Bouncing off of this low bubble, she pushed herself all the way up to 24 cents. That's a 300% run there in the last two days. She did fall back, and she is sitting right there on top of her 200-day haul. Osculators say she's in recovery right now. Our PPO is working up towards that pink line, trying to cross it, and our MACD has already had its crossover, and there's our green bars, all solid and accumulating. RSI is a bit cool. It's down there at 49 right now, but, you know, she did fall from all the way up here at that 24, down to about 16 cents. Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. So she was coming down, and I'm liking what I'm seeing here. Off of this low bubble, she not only bounced, she crushed that 200, jumping way up. And look what's going on. Our 200-day SMA was definitely coming downhill, and right now it is flattening out, folks. She pushed up, she got it to turn, came back down. She is on a solid SMA, the 50. This is going to be her bounce, her jump point, like a cat. She's come down crouching, and she should pounce back up because the 200 has opened up the door for her to try to run. Our oscillators, they show some weakness right now. We were way up there at 25 cents and we fell back here to 16 cents. So you got to expect a little bit of pullback on the oscillators. Looking at our five day, five minute. Well, she was pretty much going sideways here, right? We've got a line here. She hit that line, came down, came up, fell to it. And now she's bouncing up. And now instead of coming under it, She's landed on top of it. So we've actually started to push up already. Again, our osculators aren't showing a lot of heat or strength. They're all coming down because of the back half of the day's fall. I don't know what their financials are right now. I get the feeling they're not making any money. And this is going to be huge and financials are just around the corner. So the chart is set up to start pushing and running, but we truly don't have a hot catalyst now, but we do have a catalyst. So this could run this week, or it may not run until the news press comes out. Either way, I think it's a hot stock that deserves to be on your watch list. Just because you put it on your watch list doesn't mean it has a time limit. It can stay there for a while. So it is RQHTF. Got another hot penny stock from the major exchange for you. This is Realpha Tech Core, ticker A-I-R-E. Now, she's actually got two big hot catalysts right now, but I think they're under the radar because they did not headline these. Matter of fact, it's not even recent news. Both of these catalysts are mentioned in a news press from December, which is where our catalyst is coming from. Also, it looks like we could have a legitimate low float. So Air finished today at $1.46 with almost 17% gains. And she is on the major exchange, the NASDAQ. So what is Realpha Tech about? Well, they tell us they're a real estate technology company with a mission to develop, utilize, and commercialize their artificial intelligence focused technology stack to empower retail investors to participate in short-term rental properties. I think they've got this system where they get properties for short terms and they have investors be able to invest for short terms and they're using artificial intelligence to do this. I don't understand exactly how it works, but I did read some news that they've already trained their AI. They had bought some experimental properties, let the AI do what it needed to do. And from what I read, they have recently sold virtually all of those properties and are looking for new investments right now. So what was the relative volume around air today? Oh, we got about a 50% jump going from 409,000 to 635,000 share structure for the company. Outstanding share count, just under 45 million. Again, I was just curious. So I did a Google search looking for a number that agreed with itself. And I did virtually find the same number over and over. Not often, about three, four times, but it was the same number. 6.5 million. 
I wasn't expecting a float that low out of 44 million, which means that your insiders own about 37, 38 million shares. That's a good thing too. Market cap for the company, currently at about 55 million. Financials for air. Now I want you to pay attention to the financials because this is part of the catalyst in the news. Over the last two years, they've been making some money under a half a million, and they are bringing home some profit, under 200000 Looking at the quarterlies, they're not very impressive. The only thing you can say is they're keeping their head above water. They're not in any problems here. Balance sheet for the company, they got money in the bank, about 600000 Assets, total of $16.4 million. Ooh, we got a wee number for the liabilities, $2.7 million. So we got almost $14 million stockholder equity. That's for us investors to divvy up. Taking a look at the disclosures for the company. All right, take notice. We've got a lot of them here on the 18th of December. That's when our news came out. And most of this is actually in the news. So let's just dive on into that. This news came out on the 18th right here. Diving on into it, <laughs> long way around, right? They tell us here that Realpha Tech Core enters into a letter of intent to acquire Unified Software Group. The company announced today that it has signed a letter of intent to acquire United Software Group, an Ohio-based, privately held, multi-industry information technology consulting company operating on a global scale. Acquiring USG will serve to advance Realpha's strategy to propel the digitalization of real estate industry through the development and deployment of innovative AI solutions. The acquisition is anticipated to close the first quarter of 2024. Ding! There's our first catalyst. We are coming to the end of January. There's only two more months. Now, maybe that's a long time to you, but Put it on your watch list. The news comes out. It's going to run. It's something we know is going to happen. But there's another catalyst here, and this one I was not expecting. Remember, we were just looking at the revenues. They did less than half a million annually. Well, look what they tell us here. Our journey began as a small private company 21 years ago to a global player on pace to generate over $80 million in gross revenue in 2023. What? $80 million in 2023. Where did that show up at? Where did that money go? I'm not quite sure I understand what's going on here, but that's a lot more money. Now, we have financials coming up. The annuals are about to come out, and that's when this would show up. Now, I'm not quite sure where this money came from, but it is a huge jump from a half a million dollars last year, actually 400000 So there's your catalyst, folks. We have an acquisition being closed with AI, and we have a lot more money than we were anticipating. Let's go take a look at this chart. Oh, if a chart could tell a tale. <laughs> this is ticker AIRE. This is Realpha Tech. Not only is this a six month, four hour view, it's the entire chart for the company. They came on the market here October 23rd. Looks like about 20 bucks. And that day, they had a high of 575 bucks. No BS and no RS. That is, there's no reverse split here. They didn't adjust the chart and multiply it times anything. Those are real numbers. Now, it didn't stay there very long. It fell all the way back down to about 90 bucks, which isn't bad from a $20 start. But the next day, it jumped again up to about 220 bucks, fell back down to the 90, jumped to 120, and that was the end of her song and dance. She shimmied on down here to the $10 range, and for the last five months, she has been steadily dropping until she hit this low bubble this morning of $1.06. Now, she has been making low bubbles all the way down. Every single one of these bars was a new low bubble. So what makes this low bubble any different? Well, the only difference we see here is it finally touched the 200-day haul, I keep telling you, penny stocks respect the 200-day haul. It's another long-term line like your 200-day SMA. It just puts more credence on current prices. Well, once she broke that, 
That was it. She has pushed herself through the 20, through the 50. Now, I know it doesn't look like much, but look at all that volume that came in today. This shows me a trend change is on the horizon. I also see down here we've got a nice pattern going on. Let me zoom in on my PPO there. See how it's going up? You see how my ADX is going down? That tells me the price is going to climb. Guaranteed 100%. ADX, think of it as trend continuation. As long as you have a straight line, whatever is going on here, it's climbing right now. As long as that line stays straight, it means my surge is going to continue. So as long as these two are going the same directions, guaranteed your price is rising. Or in other words, if either one of those lines change in any direction, it means that your climb has stopped climbing. That's why I like putting my ADX underneath my PPO. It's a nice setup to watch, nice and easy. We had a strong bounce off of the MACD right when she hit that 200 haul there. She's been climbing ever since. Lots of big green bars here, and she's pushing towards that signal line. And our RSI is a bit cool. It's down there at 52 right now. Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. Ooh, look at that. Toboggan ride. Speed sledding all the way downhill. And then right here off of this low bubble, we got a nice bounce coming up. Our 200-day haul is starting to turn around and flatten. There goes our 20 over our 50. Everything looks like she is turning right now. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Our nine day is coming down because she cracked that 200, hit her head. She's going to pull back, but she has not fallen all the way back to the 50. She's hanging up here. She has a job to do and she's not going anywhere. That's her first tap. Bring in this flat. This is looking like a nice setup, folks. Our oscillators show a lot of heat, but there has been some cooling off in the aftermarket period, but nothing drastic. Taking a look at that five-day, five-minute. Phew! Talk about a change of trend. She came downhill, hit this real low drop. I mean, look at that. She fell from $1.23 down to $1.06, spiked right back up to homeland, and then took a big bounce from $1.23 up to $1.55. Boy, if you would have caught that pre-market, and I'm sure that was early in the morning, what time was that? Uh, that <laughs> it looks like it was about five in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. So yeah, you could have got a buy, but you'd have been tired. But she ripped, folks. That was a solid run. She then came down partway. I mean, she halfway point is somewhere in here. She never even came halfway down. She came down underneath that 50, settled on the 50, and right now she's arguing with the 50-day SMA, 200-day SMA is climbing. Oscillators are a bit weak right now. There's no doubt about that. But I see a lot of potential for this company, folks. We have an acquisition that is about to close anytime the next two months. And we have revenues of $80 million? Really? That still surprises me. But the annual reports are due to come out here at the end of the month. They have to release them. So there's another catalyst for us. And the chart is set up, folks. She has started breaking out right now. So I'm thinking AIRE is not a waste of time. But don't take my word for it. Do your own due diligence. Come on, it is your money, right? I'm just giving you a heads up for some of the hot stocks that are out there. I don't know which are the hottest. I can't go through them all. But I'm sharing my due diligence on a few. So you've got four hot charts. There's some due diligence you got to do before tomorrow. And here's three hot penny stocks. Thanks for joining me, folks. I'll see you tomorrow at my live streaming event. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow.